Welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we are going to start actually giving the player the ability to damage the enemy. But one more thing we need to do first of all with our enemy is to connect our state machine. If we go to the state machine here and open up the script, you'll notice that we have this on target reached function. Now this is a signal that we are connecting to the enemy's navigation agent 3D node here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select that navigation agent 3D node, go to the inspector, Go up to the node panel, go to signals, and go down to target reached. We're going to double click that. We're going to scroll down until we find a state machine. Click pick, and we're going to find the on target reached function. Hit OK, connect, and there we go. So now this function is going to be called when we have reached the end of uh, the, the, the path of the enemy. So let's get started on setting up the player's ability to attack. Now this is going to be done through equipables. So pretty much what the player is going to be able to do is pick up an item and then inside of their inventory they will be able to equip it. And this basically means that it'll appear in their hand and we can then use it as you know a weapon or pretty much whatever. Okay, these equip objects will be able to be anything. You could have a lantern, a torch, um, any sort of thing, a note, a map. Uh, but for us, we are going to have a weapon, a sword that we can swing. So to begin, what we are going to do is we're going to create a number of different scripts. So here in combat, what we're going to do is we're going to right click and we're going to create a new script called Equip Controller. We are then going to create another script and this one is going to be called Equip Object. We're going to create another script and this one is going to be called Equip Sword. Okay, now with these three scripts, what we're going to do is we are first of all going to open up the uh, player, the player scene here, and we are going to create a brand new empty node, so add child node, and we're going to call this one equip controller. And on this node, we are going to attach the equip controller script. And this script is pretty much just going to manage um, which object the or which item the player has equipped at that current moment um, it'll manage equipping it unequipping it uh, and communicating with the inventory that way so next what we need to do is actually create the equipable object that the player is going to hold and this is going to be the sword so what we're going to do is we're going to open up our camera here um, we've already got one child object but we're going to create another so we're going to right click on camera add child node and we are going to create a node 3d and this one is going to be called Equip Origin. So pretty much every object that we want the player to be able to hold in the hand, we will set as a child of Equip Origin. Okay, think of this as just a container, uh, a parent object. Then as a child of this, we'll create another node, 3D, and we are going to call this one Equip Object underscore Sword. And then what we can do is we can create one more um, node 3D, and we're going to rename this one to be called Visual, okay? then we need to give it a model so we can actually see it. So inside of the combat models folder, we have sword and inside we have short sword.obj. We'll drag that in. Uh, we'll find the short sword here. We'll make that a child of visual. And on the short sword, we'll just set that position to be zero, zero, zero. We also have a short sword material, which we can drag on like that. And then what we need to do is position the sword in the correct uh, place. So I'm going to select the visual node here, and I'm just going to position this uh, roughly where we think it might be, okay? We can press E to go to the rotate tool. Now, when positioning this, you'll probably want to press play to see what it looks like, but the thing of that is, you know, it can take time, and it's, you know, overall going to be a pretty slow process of actually figuring out, you know, what is the correct orientation for the sword. So the way we can easily see what our camera is looking at is by going up to where here at the top here where we have view and we'll change this to two viewports. Then we can click on where it says perspective in the bottom one and go down to where it says cinematic preview. And as you can see, we can then see a preview of our camera. Okay, this sort of um, orangey, uh, yellowish green box here. So now with the visual selected, we can position our sword where we see fit. Okay, we might wanna orientate it. Uh, in the way that we want, something like this. Okay, there we go. So now when we press play, we have our sword in hand here. 
Now, the next thing we want to do is actually animate this sword, okay? We want this sword to be able to swing and hit stuff. So, the way we're going to do this is by using the animation player node. So, what we're going to do is we're going to right click on the equip object underscore sword, add child node, and we're going to search for animation player. Now, this is Godot's animation system, which basically allows us to change the value of properties over time. So over time, we can change our position, our rotation, our scale, etc., even variables in scripts. Now, with the animation player as a child of equip object sword, we're going to go down and select it. And you should see the animation panel down here open up. Then what we're going to do is we're going to click on the animation button, go new, and we'll, re and we'll give the animation a name called attack and hit OK. Now, here we are inside of the animation editor. Uh, pretty much what we do here is we have a timeline at the top and we can drag our mouse cursor to change the playhead value. So you can see um, if we click on this button right here or shortcut D, that will play the animation. We can press it again, it'll play the animation, but we don't really have anything at the moment to, um, that is animated. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click add track, 3D position and select the visual node right here. Hit okay and that is gonna add that track down here on the timeline. Now, what we need to do then is add a keyframe, and that is basically how the animation system works, is we add keyframes, and as the timeline progresses, it transitions from one keyframe to the next, and each keyframe basically contains um, the state of the track, okay? So for example, with this position track, each keyframe is gonna contain a vector three representing the object's position. And if we have two different um, keyframes, it is gonna transition between them, okay? Thus, we can animate our object. So I'm then going to right click on the track down here and click insert key. And that is our first key added down there. Now, what we can do is if we move the track forward a bit here by just clicking and dragging, we select the visual. Um, let's then just have a little test here. We'll then move it forward like that. Then down the timeline, we can right click again, insert key, and look what happens when we play it. Okay, we have the animation now going as it's moving between these two positions we have set. Um, so I'm gonna delete that last key there because we don't really want that one there. And we're gonna add another track for the 3D rotation for the visual as well, okay? And add, insert the key. So now we have the position and rotation of our sword. Now we basically have to go through and animate it to swing and attack. Timeline down here is pretty small, so what we can do is on the bottom right, we have this little slider with a magnifying glass, and we can just drag it up to increase the zoom level. And this gray bar at the top is basically what our animation will look like. Okay, this is the, if you press D, you'll see that it plays to the end here. Now, if you want to increase the length of the animation, you can just go down uh, to the top, you can go up to the top right here and change this animation length in seconds. Right now it's set to one, we can make it two, um, but I'm just gonna keep it at one for now. We might even shorten it a bit. So I'm gonna move the playhead to about 0.1 here and we're gonna have our charge back. So I'm just going to, oops, move that back there. I'm then going to charge back our weapon, maybe something like that, move it up a bit. Uh, and then we can right click, insert key, insert key for both position and rotation, and there we go. And then we'll hold it there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold this here. So I'm gonna copy, hold down shift, select these two keyframes, move forward a bit, right click, and go duplicate keys. And now we have a duplication here. So these two are the same, move forward a bit more, and then swing. So we'll then just move this forward here. There we go, over there. We can then put in those keyframes, and let's have a look at what it looks like, okay? And there we go. Um, we can then bring it back to its original position by selecting those two first keyframes here, moving the playhead over and right clicking, duplicate keys. Now, this is what it looks like. Um, we probably wanna hold it there as well. So I'm gonna copy and paste, or I'm gonna select these two keys when we're at the end, move forward a bit. I am then going to duplicate those keys and probably bring these ones back a bit here. So now this is what our animation looks like. Okay, pretty simple, but you can of course go in and tweak that however you wish. So that is our animation done. We can save that. And in the next lesson, we are gonna be looking at how we can actually then make this animation play as well as damaging the enemy. So thanks for watching and I'll see you all then.